Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocketnow.com. The Samsung Galaxy Nexus and the iPhone 4S are two of the hottest smartphones on the market right now. And in this video, we're going to put them head to head in a comparison. Let's get to it. Okay, let's get started with pricing and availability. The iPhone 4S is available on a lot of carriers around the world, specifically in the US. It's on Verizon, Sprint, and AT&T for $199, $299, or $399, depending on whether you want 16, 32, or 64 gigabytes of data space. You can also get it as an unlocked device and choose your own carrier. Of course, you're going to be running around $600 or more for that privilege. The Galaxy Nexus is only available as an unlocked GSM phone right now shipping in Europe. You can get it at clove.co.uk, for example, for around $600. Uh, it will work on T-Mobile and AT&T in the US, but a version for Verizon is coming. It's going to be a little bit thicker, but it will have LTE support, and the thinking on that is that it'll be $299 after a new two-year agreement. Um, it's likely that the Galaxy Nexus, or in fact, likely, it's it's most likely that it'll be coming to the US as an unlocked phone, just like it's unlocked in Europe, so you can choose your own carrier. And again, we're talking about 600 bucks for the privilege of owning the Galaxy Nexus. Let's talk about hardware on both of these devices. Very, very different hardware in terms of feel and thickness and screen resolution. Start off with the iPhone. We've got that 3.5 inch screen. Uh, it is 960 by 640 resolution, making for a pixel density of 326 which is the highest pixel density of any phone out there. Even the Galaxy Nexus, which has that full 720p display, 1280 down by 720 across. It's a 4.65 inch screen. You might be thinking bigger is better for screens, right? Well, some people don't agree with that. On the iPhone, the 3.5 inch screen means that you can reach any part of the screen with your thumb with one hand. On the Galaxy Nexus, unless you have very big hands, you're not going to be able to reach the top of the screen with one hand, thus requiring you to take out a second hand. Not that big of a deal, but some people really appreciate the one-handed usability of the iPhone, but also there's a lot of people that are saying, hey, the screen is just way too small on the iPhone. When you play video, when you play games, it just, it really lacks that, that largeness that you get with the bigger screens of, say, the Galaxy Nexus. So let's turn them over to the side here and take a look at hardware. Uh, at its thinnest point, the Galaxy Nexus is thinner than the iPhone. At its thickest point, down towards the bottom, it is thicker than the iPhone. So depending on what part of the phone you're looking at, of course, we've got this curved design. The Galaxy Nexus, the iPhone 4S, is uh, just two wafers of glass in between some metal. Let's turn over to the back. We've got an 8 megapixel camera on the iPhone 4S capable of shooting 1080p video. Wait until the end of this video and you can see 1080p samples from both of these devices. We've got a lower spec camera here, 5 megapixels on the Galaxy Nexus, also capable of 1020p video. And you'll be the judge of which takes better video. Uh, we've got the speaker back here, we've got the speaker on the bottom on the iPhone. And going over to the other side, basically the same kind of thing. Volume rockers are on the same side on both of these devices. Inside, we've got Apple's A5 dual-core 1 gigahertz CPU with 512 mega megabytes of RAM. Inside of the Galaxy Nexus, we have a 1.2 gigahertz uh, dual-core CPU from Texas Instruments with 1 gigabyte of RAM. Uh, this particular model is the 16 gigabyte model, but of course you can go to 32 or 64 gigabytes. Galaxy Nexus, this is the 16 gigabyte model, and that's really all you get. You don't even get micro SD expansion, so if you want more, you can't have more. In terms of the actual design of the devices, we've got a large predominant screen on the Galaxy Nexus, no buttons. The buttons are built into the screen. Of course, on the iPhone, we have the, uh, the home button here, the quintessential home button for all iOS devices. Both have front-facing cameras, proximity sensors, and light sensors, uh, which you get a little bit different on the Galaxy Nexus, and you can see it blinking here, is a notification LED, which tells you when you have missed calls, uh, missed emails, and that kind of thing. Very useful, so you don't always have to turn on your screen to see what's going on on your phone. In terms of 4G, uh, the iPhone 4S is capable of HSPA Plus on AT&T. On the other CDMA networks, of course, you get EVDO Rev A. Galaxy Nexus can also do HSPA Plus, 
So really the playing field is level here until you get the LTE version of the Galaxy Nexus, which should be extremely fast on Verizon's network. So you know the story here. We've got iOS 5 here and Ice Cream Sandwich Android 4.0. Android has always been about customization. So you can go to a variety of home screens up to five. You can't choose if you want to have more or less. It's always five. You can add dynamic widgets that show you battery life or your next calendar appointment or the weather or stock information. On the iPhone, it's still icons and icons and icons. You can make folders, but you can also make folders now where you've always been able to make folders on Android. Now they operate in the same way uh, that it does on iOS. So we click and drag and a little folder will appear just like if you were to do likewise here, it kind of folder appears and there you go. So home screen interfaces, they look similar. Although of course with Android, you can add lots of widgets to your heart's content and you can make a, you can install a third-party launcher in Android. Can't do that in iOS unless you jailbreak. Both of these devices now have notification trays. They slide in from the bottom. Uh, this was possibly a ripoff of Android when Apple decided to do the slide down notification shade, although you could argue, how else can you make a notification shade? Of course, we get that here in the uh, on the Galaxy Nexus here, but we can selectively remove notifications. You can do that by group when you have a lot of notifications in iOS. If you want to access more apps in Android 4.0, of course, you hit the app tray and you can swipe to the right, page to the right. In iOS, of course, you have to have all your apps on the home screen. There is no app tray. You just put your apps there. You can organize them into folders, put them away on different screens, but there's no way of really hiding apps that you don't use. They're always there in your face. Okay, so let's go back and talk about web browsing performance. Very important. Both of these devices have cleared cache. We'll make sure that the programs are out of memory here. So we'll swipe that away, double tap, and make sure that Safari's out of memory. Let's see which opens faster. That's always good to see. Okay, pretty much equal there. So let's do that and we'll go to uh, pocketnow.com. Again, all cache has been cleared. Let's see which gets there faster. Okay, iPhone 4S slightly faster. Both are very smooth moving down the page. You get to see how the higher resolution screen of the Galaxy Nexus uh, makes it possible to see more on the page at one time. Um, so we've got four stories here and we've got one, two, three, four, five, We've got much more than four stories there. So let's go to the bottom, hit desktop version. Lots of images here, a lot of content. Let's see which gets there first. We're over the same Wi-Fi network. By the way, screen brightness is set as the same. Uh, the iPhone 4S one there, let's pinch to zoom, pinch to zoom. Very smooth on both. Slightly choppy here. There's a lot going on on the, on the Pocket Now page with lots of images. Let's slide over here to this story up here. That cleared up. We'll let them go at different times. Okay, we can move down the page, we can zoom in, pan around. Let's open up the Galaxy Nexus review, which has a ton of images. So let's see which device can handle all of these images better. And while it's loading, let's see what happens. We get checkerboards here, or really a blank screen. Now everything's there. But for a while on the iPhone 4S, kind of blanked out for a minute, so you couldn't see anything. Let's check screen like that. Let's check screen rotation speed, see which can rotate quick more quickly. Kind of got a head start there on the Galaxy Nexus. Let's do it again. Exact same time, even with the animation on the iPhone 4S. A little bit faster on the iPhone 4S, so not that much of a difference. Let's go to another website, and then we will jump into the next test. Okay, let's jump into another page this time. Let's go to um, Engadget here. Okay, Galaxy Nexus was first there. Go down the page. Faster scrolling on the Galaxy Nexus. Let's try to hit the desktop link. Can't really pinch to zoom on a mobile site. At the same time, again, another page with a lot of images, a lot of complex code. Let's see which handles it better. Kind of move down the page while they load. About a tie there, really. Both of these devices are very capable web browsing machines. Both are very smooth. Although with the Galaxy Nexus, you just get a lot more because the screen's much larger and you have more pixels on the screen to work with. Um, you can also choose to have full screen browsing turned on on the Galaxy Nexus, which gets rid of this bar at the top, granting you an even bigger view of the web. 
All right, and for the next test here, we're going to go into YouTube. YouTube has been cleared from memory on both devices. Let's see which opens it up faster. Boom. OK, it looks like they were about a tie there. Uh, iOS actually brought it forth faster, but the content didn't load as fast as we have in the Galaxy Nexus. So let's actually search for, say, uh, Galaxy Nexus. Okay, we're going to click on the first video we see here and which, see which starts playing first. Boom. It starts off in landscape here. Looks like it was first on the Galaxy Nexus. As you can see, of course, with the larger screen on the Galaxy Nexus, you just get a much larger view. You don't get black bars on the top. Uh, but both are playing the video back very, very smoothly. They were within seconds of loading. Uh, but gotta say, definitely a much better video experience on the Galaxy Nexus. So let's get out of this test. Okay, so the next thing we're going to compare is the screen. Uh, obviously, both of these have very high resolution screens. The pixel density is higher on the iPhone 4S, meaning if you take a little square that's one inch by in one inch and you counted the pixels, you'd have a higher count. Uh, but on the Galaxy Nexus, you just get higher resolution, more pixels overall. We've also got two different screen technologies here. We've got Super AMOLED HD from Samsung and Apple's what they call retina display, which is an IPS LCD panel, uh, which is lit differently. It's a different screen technology completely than AMOLED, which results in, in some cases, ac more accurate colors, but you also get washed out um, blacks. Blacks aren't truly black, and we're going to see that in a second. But what's immediately apparent here is that because there are more pixels on the screen on the Galaxy Nexus, we can read more at one time. But what happens when you get close in on a letter? Uh, and we did a whole video about the 720p screen on the Galaxy Nexus. We'll put a link up in the video so you can check that out. But let's get really close and look at the text. On the iPhone 4S, you can hardly see pixels. In fact, you really can't see pixels. It's just extremely crisp and clear. On the Galaxy Nexus, it's also extremely crisp and clear. But since we're comparing these two devices, it's a little bit less so. Uh, it's. Uh, the pentile subpixel configuration makes it so that subpixels are actually shared among each other. Whereas on the iPhone's quote retina display, uh, each pixel has its own subpixels, just thus generating a smoother looking image. So both are very nice in terms of the display, but if you're if you're if you want the best in terms of text on the screen, uh, definitely the 4S is the winner there. We're going to go into Safari now because we have an image that we're going to show you. We're showing you this image because it's got a lot of color. You can look at the, the, the difference in color, but it also has a lot of detail when we zoom in. So here we're going to zoom in on the center, and you can be the judge of which has better color. You could say that the screen on the iPhone 4S might look a little bit washed out. Um, some people don't like sort of how whites and blacks are very true on the Super AMOLED screen. It's a matter of personal preference uh, and, and which looks better to you. But if we zoom into the detail, we're actually zooming in a little bit too much. You can see that both do a really good job at recreating the detail. It's just a matter of how much you get to see on the screen at one time and the lever, level of contrast and color that just looks good to you. So both of these devices do a very good job. Um, we tend to think that the AMOLED screen does a better job at making colors pop because of that high degree of contrast. And let's see which of these devices does better with high FPS gaming. We've got Asphalt 6 loaded on both. Let's launch them at the same time. They're out of program memory. All right, a little bit faster with the load on the iPhone 4S. Let's get these into a position where we can uh, compare them kind of side by side. All right, they're both loading. Let's get past this screen. Hit the Again, the iPhone 4S is a little bit faster with the loads. It's touch to continue. Looks like I missed a touch there. Okay, uh, Mini Cooper, always a good, uh, always a good time. We're going to Nassau. Normal race. Again, Mini Cooper. Let's see what else we got here. We'll just pick the Mini Cooper. Hit race at the same time. See which gets through with the load first.
All right, here we go. Galaxy Nexus faster load there. It's getting pretty loud. You can see the video. Let's just move past these and race. It's going to be a little bit... Uh... Okay, they're a little bit different in terms of the controls. All right, here we go. Playing two different games here, so if I'm crashing into a lot of things, you can probably see why. But you should be able to get a sense for... Oh, I see. I'm not steering properly on this side. You can kind of get a sense for how the FPS look. I should probably learn how to drive. Okay, now I'm steering. It is impossible to play two games at one time. And so the lesson there was don't play two games at once on two different phones. It just doesn't work. Uh, the gaming experience was definitely better on the Galaxy Nexus because you get those really sharp colors because of the great contrast. Uh, and also because of the larger screen makes the game more immersive. The iPhone 4S seemed to be a little bit faster in loading the game and it was tough to tell. We'll have to go back and watch the video to see which one seemed to have a higher amount of frames per second, which is always important when doing 3D gaming. So that was a comparison between the iPhone 4S and the Galaxy Nexus, two very different devices with their own strengths and weaknesses. We're going to add to this end of, to the end of this video some 1080p video samples so you can add that to the comparison and determine which of these these two devices does a better job at filming high definition video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and stay tuned for that video comparison right now. So we are recording video, uh, HD 1080p video on the Galaxy Nexus and the iPhone for us at the exact same time the phones are literally stacked next to each other. So you're seeing almost the same thing, probably not exactly the same thing. We're just looking at some plants right now so you can get a sense for how things look. Uh, and then we're going to move to this other plant over here, kind of move around a little bit. So we are recording video, uh, HD 1080p video on the Galaxy Nexus and the iPhone for us at the exact same time the phones are literally stacked next to each other. So you're seeing almost the same thing, probably not exactly the same thing. We're just looking at some plants right now so you can get a sense for how things look. Uh, and then we're going to move to this other plant over here, kind of move around a little bit.